Now, I just wanted to give a bit of an update on what the World Health Organization is talking about in its latest bulletin. And they've actually said something remarkably interesting. Just listen to the words, I'll read them to you. Six months ago, none of us could have imagined how our world and our lives would be thrown into turmoil by this new virus. So the World Health Organization are here saying they couldn't imagine that there could be a pandemic. Now, I imagined it, and I'm not even an epidemiologist. M many of you imagined it, but it seems that the World Health Organization was incapable of this. And I was just sort of thrown into incredulity by this statement that uh, that Dr. Tedros has made in his, I think it was Dr. Tedros, in, in, in this World Health Organization report. I'll just, I'll just show you it, actually. It's here. I made a copy of it. Six months ago, none of us could have imagined how our world and our lives would be thrown into turmoil by this new virus. It's caught the World Health Organization on the hop. Now, of course, the World Health Organization, these are the people that we charge and internationally we pay large amounts of money to, to protect us against pandemics. But they couldn't imagine there could be a pandemic. There's been numerous pandemics in the past, but they couldn't imagine there'd be a pandemic. They looked at the transmissibility of this virus and said, well, carry on with flights out of China. It's not a problem. But because they couldn't imagine a pandemic. Now, if you would paid a bricklayer and he said, you know, I just couldn't imagine that this war would end up being wonky. Or if you paid a roofer to build your roof on your house and he said, you know, I just can't imagine how this roof has been leaking. Or if you came into my care and you developed a pressure sore or blood clots, you know, I'd say, well, I didn't expect you to develop a pressure sore. Or I had no idea you'd develop blood clots in your legs and they would go to your lungs, causing a pulmonary embolism. Or I had no idea if I didn't give you a drink for two or three days and stop your intravenous fluid, you'd become dehydrated. It's my job to anticipate these things. And in healthcare, we spend an awful lot of time preventing complications. That's a large bit of what we're about, preventing complications. That's what we do. That's a large thing, a part of what we do. You know, if the surgeon said, you know, I just couldn't imagine this patient would develop a wound infection. Surgeons know it's a risk and they take precautions against it day in, day out. Or if the pharmacist said, you know, I just can't imagine that I've given you the wrong medicine. I can't see why you're taking the wrong medicine. You know, these people are, are, are supposed to anticipate this. This is what we do. This is what we train for. It's what, what all this education's for. And, and yet uh, the World Health Organization um, do, do, just can't, can't imagine it. It's really quite, um, it's a very strange thing for them to say, to be quite honest. Anyway, that's where we're at now. Now, having said that, I'm sure if we asked him nicely, Dr. Nabarro might take over for a year or two just, just to help us out. So, so hopefully that will happen because there needs to be some sort of accountability here. And at the moment, there's just none. It's just a laughable situation. Where is the accountability? Anyway, that's the rant over, promise. <laughs> now, the, the other points they're making, they make, is it four, five, five points they make, which are actually very good. Um, so first, y your health is in, is in your hands. This is what the World Health Organization are saying. And this is absolutely true. Um, your, your health is in your hands. That's uh, an important principle. Now, if I choose to drink too much alcohol or eat too much or um, not exercise or take part in dangerous activities or take recreational drugs, that, then these are all things that affect my health. That I, I am largely responsible, responsible for my own health. Now, of course, there's things I can't control uh, and then, then we do need professional help. But a lot of our, our health is actually in our hands and, and that's what the World Health Organization is saying here. In terms, in terms of this particular problem, your health is in your hands. So what do we need? Well, we need... I'm in focus again now. So we need, we need physical distancing. Yes. We need good hand hygiene. We need to cover coughs. We need to stay at home if we feel sick. All of these are really basic things. And I think the point here is a good one. We mustn't forget all these basic things. Now, unfortunately, they're not saying they've got some dramatic new cure, but, but these things, we do know that these things work. Physical distancing, 
especially indoors, hand hygiene, covering coughs, staying at home if you feel sick. These basic things are important and they are within our control and certainly within our community's control. Wearing masks where appropriate, also within our control. Very cheap, low-tech, low-cost interventions. All of these things, easy to do, we just have the will to do them. Actually, that's not quite fair. They're not always easy to do, but you know we can work out ways to minimise these risks. Only sharing information from reliable sources. So I agree with the World Health Organization on this. We need to make sure that there's an evidence base for the claims that uh, people are making. And you may have noticed lately that I've been challenged on my evidence base a few times, and that's why I'm putting an awful lot more references into my into my work at the moment. So I'm hoping it's well referenced so you can check them all out for you, yourself. And of course, this, to check I'm not making this up, just go onto the World Health Organization site and check that. So only sharing from reliable sources is very important. Now, you may be in a low risk category, the World Health Organization is saying. You may be young and you may feel that you have no comorbidities, therefore you can go out and have a bit of a party. So you may feel you're in a low risk category, but the point is you will come into people that are not in low risk categories. So it's not just thinking about ourself. It's not just thinking that I'm in a low risk category, therefore I can take risks. It's it's who I can affect, other people as well. So in other words, this is not an individual effort, it's it's a community effort. So that's their first point. Nothing complicated, but but fair, fair points, fair points. Second, suppress the transmission. Ensure that health workers have PPE because healthcare required infection has been a common problem. People have gone into hospital without COVID-19 and got COVID-19 in hospital. That should not happen. So health workers need to have PPE. Improve surveillance to find cases. All cases, every case should be contacted. Every case should be traced and the quarantines should be contacted. So everyone who's got it, we should know they have it and we should be able to quarantine their contacts. This is how we suppress the transmission by breaking the chains of transmission. Again, nothing complicated here, but very much worth reiterating. The World Health Organization has decided to do this. I think it's worth doing this. And uh, if we did this, it would work. This would work. We know these strategies are effective. So that's their second point. Their third point is to save lives. This is kind of a mitigation point, isn't it? Third, early identification and clinical care saves lives. Now, I've just been looking at cases in um, uh, South Africa and Iraq where there wasn't enough oxygen and, and people died as a consequence of that. Because we know that while the vast majority of people get mild or asymptomatic disease, four or five percent get critical disease, they need medical care. If they don't get it, they're probably going to die. That could make the difference between a case fatality rate of 0.5 percent and three or four percent. We're talking tens of millions of lives around the world here by providing appropriate, timely medical care. And the tragedy is, I predict now in this pandemic, There will be many, many deaths in this world because medical care is not available to individuals with the disease. This is an indictment on the organisation of humanity and us all, but it, it has been the case already and it will be the case more so. The only question is, are we talking about, well, we're talking about thousands. Are we talking about tens of thousands? Are we talking about hundreds of thousands? Are we talking about millions? I fear we could be talking about many people who are going to die through lack of basic health care, such as antibiotics for secondary chest infections. The World Health Organization specify providing oxygen and dexamethasone saves lives. We know that people who are hypoxic die if the oxygens are too low. We know that dexamethasone improves survival. These things are known 
it's pretty well all we do know about looking for <laughs> looking after these people no that's not fair i mean, I mean this is this is the only drug we know to, to to be life-saving the dexamethasone and the oxygen there's so many other supportive strategies of course that we can implement but this is what the world health organization are specifying and in doing so they are being evidence-based Paying special attention to high risk groups, including the elderly long term care facilities, this will save lives. The fact that this has not been done has cost thousands of lives around the world, thousands and thousands of lives around the world. And uh, we did an interview with some pretty wonderful people in a care home in Cheddar about a month ago who were aware of this and saved the lives of their residents. So Cheddar has done this. Japan has done this. This is the example given by the WHO. It has one of the highest populations of elderly, but its death rate is low because they protected them. Fourth, accelerate research. And you'll be pleased to hear that the World Health Organization is convening another meeting. Now, let's hope something positive comes out of it. It could well. Getting experts together is always a good thing, but accelerating research. And basically, we haven't come up with much concrete so far, certainly in terms of therapeutics. More things are coming out. I'm personally convinced that convalescent plasma is going to be affected because of the antibodies. We know that the oxygen and the dethamexone are effective. We know lots of other things as well. I mean, we know that dehydrated patients don't do well. There's, lot, there's lots of things about supportive care that we can give. Um, we, we, we learned yesterday that uh, doctors are often giving uh, heparin to prevent uh, blood clotting. There's lots of supportive things we can do. And uh, more needs to be known, though, because this is still a novel virus. Fifth, fifth point. Political leadership. Now... Um, you could stop this video now and, and write down half a dozen examples of uh, where political leadership have been lacking. Um, now, if you feel the need to, to vent that point, as I sometimes do, do put it in the comments. I'm more than happy to to, to uh, read those in the comments. Um, we all have our frustrations there. Uh, we need political leadership. You know, I really think we need more scientists and nurses and doctors in political leadership. Um, you know, political leaders are so often lawyers, career politicians. Nothing necessarily wrong with that, but wouldn't it be great to have more national leaders who were doctors, nurses, scientists, technologists, engineers, people who interact with the real world? We have uh, disappointingly few of those. Anyway, that's, sorry, that's a <laughs> it slipped into my opinions there. Sorry about that. Uh, national unity and global solidarity are essential, which clearly we haven't got. But the World Health Organization says they're essential, and I agree. And and what's been interesting to me is all the guests I've had on my uh, channel who've kindly given up their time and expertise to be interviewed. This has been a common theme amongst them all. You know, we need to work together on this, but it's not really happening. Comprehensive strategies to suppress transmission, save lives, minimise the social and economic impact of the virus. Well, that's, that's motherhood and apple pie, isn't it? You know, everyone can agree with that. Um, right. Other points. These five points can turn the tide. So, yeah, they can. If they are applied consistently, universally, in a, in a dedicated way, they can. How to live with this virus because this is the new normal. Right, let's be clear. You know this already. You've watched this channel. You've listened to other news outlets. This virus is not going away anytime soon. This virus will not go away in 2020. We need a new normal way of living. The virus is not going anywhere fast. It's not going anywhere in 2020. We need this new way of uh, living the social distancing, the respiratory hygiene, the hand hygiene, all those things that we actually talked about, the World Health Organization identified way back here the, in the first page, the, uh, these points are, are the new normal for the rest of 2020 
and probably for the first half of 2021 as well. Most people remain susceptible. It's a novel virus. More than, we don't know. Let, let's say 90% of the world's population still have zero immunity, no immunity to this virus. And we've emphasised this many times, but we'll say it again. We are still at the start of this pandemic. 90% of the world's population could still become infected with this virus. Very few people are immune. We are near the start of the pandemic. It is not going away anytime soon. But you knew that already. The virus has still a lot of room to move is the way the World Health, Health Organization has put it. This is not even close to being over. We're still at the start. Globally, the pandemic is actually speeding up. Now, some countries have had remarkable success. Wonderful. But globally, we are seeing an increase in cases and the world is in this for the long haul. As I've said, well into 2021. So, um, interesting. Um can't get over that. But 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 ha having said that, you know, having made, let's say, a shaky start, the World Health Organization is saying some good stuff now. But I still think there needs to be some accountability and uh, change of leadership is always something that should be considered. <laughs>